Hello there. Welcome to another episode of What's Up CK, where we talk to, diff to different municipal officials, individuals, and organizations that are doing some amazing things during these very trying times. And of course, the world's kind of slowed down in the world of filming. You know, we're not going to the movies as much anymore. Uh, of course, you know, we're trying to find different ways to watch movies, whether it's streaming online or, you know, even locally in our own area. We still have a lot of great uh, artists that are making some great things. I don't know if you guys got a chance to go out to Tilbury to see the CK International Film Festival, but some really, really cool uh, uh, movies that came out there. And, you know, we got to drive in and see it. And um, some th cool things that are happening in here. Our Mayor Darren Canop is getting our area a little more involved with filming in the Southwestern region. And I thought we'd talk a little bit about filming in CK. So I am happy to have Rob Bellamy, the founder of the CK International Film Festival and two-time, two-time winner, Ben Sorokis, uh, filmmaker and two-time winner. Guys, thanks for joining me today. Sweet. Thank you. <laughs> happy to be here. <laughs> so I got to ask you guys, uh, it's been an interesting ride since March, but how have you guys been doing during this very interesting time in our community province and the whole world for that matter? Go ahead, Rob. Oh, uh, well, honestly, I've been doing a lot of podcasting. Filming has been a little slow. Uh, it's been picking up in the last couple months. So I do a lot of live streaming, a lot of podcasting and uh, organization, getting ready for other events, hopefully next year. And for me, uh, I think when like the shutdown things first happened, I, I took a bit of a calculated risk and I just completely took it easy. Just took my time off, relaxed, tried to just spend time with my family and everything. Having a feeling that things would probably pick back up and now it is, it's, it's back. And I have a music studio, so that's kind of kept me going as well. Uh, but the film thing is definitely, uh, it's right back in full force again. Yeah, no, it's, uh, there was a time when I thought, I'm like, everything just went on hold standstill. Like, nobody was making television programming. Nobody was making filming. That was probably early on in stage one and maybe one and a half, one, two. Uh, I was happy to see in stage two when they say, okay, Canada, you can start making content again. This is great because we need it. Uh, and now recently, Mayor Darren Canop signed on with what I call the, the Avengers of movie filming. Uh, the mayors of Southwestern Ontario, known as MOSO. Moso, I don't know if that's going to be some superhero thing um, to get some more attention in our, our neck of the woods. Um, so as filmmakers and idealists, you know, who make some great content here, you know, Rob, you made some stuff. Ben, you made some stuff. You made a whole bunch. What are your uh, thoughts on this, uh, this little initiative that's coming into our area? Ben? Ah, sure. Thank you. <laughs> um, I mean, obviously, uh, it's exciting to think that um, that we're open to the film industry coming here. I think people have been saying for a while, like, why wouldn't we have it in Chatham Kent? We're so near borders. Um, I mean, obviously right now that's a challenge, but thinking ahead, being near borders is a tremendous thing for the film industry to be able to hop over to Canada and film, uh, as well as, you know, people from Canada sort of getting out of the gridlock of the GTA and getting into some easier moving places with more options. So just the idea that this was put on the table and that people are, are opening themselves up to it is, in my opinion, exciting and uh i think we have a lot to, uh, i think we have a lot to offer in chatham kent so the idea that you could see us in more programming um because think about it everything you see on tv is filmed elsewhere you don't see us represented so it would be really cool i think to have chatham kent be the backdrop for some new programming rob absolutely i agree 100 percent with everything you said chatham has got so many different locations uh people and uh, environments we like uh, eric mentioned at the beginning we filmed one in a basement it was in a comic store it was just found accidentally and it turned into a beautiful location that's been used multiple times and there are other little gems like that all over this area so people coming down here people this area is still new to filming so people still love it as opposed to toronto where there's something filmed every other day so people get annoyed with it this area still embraces it so I think it's a great idea to bring more here. So before we went on there, air there, Rob, we were talking about uh, the International Film Festival, which is the new name. But back in you know days when we had TV Kojiko, it was the just the CK Film Festival. So yes. a lot's kind of happened uh, as we've grown and made our own you know little film festival. You know, you started us up, made the new International Film Festival. Ben, you've been in uh, a two-time winner. I don't know when you kind of got yourself in there for your first win. And now this year you've seen 34, a 34% increase of entries like from all of Ontario, which is crazy. And people are watching these films. So uh, 
even during COVID, we're seeing these fantastic submissions. We just got to know how more important is it to continue trying to make content, even during this very interesting time that we live in. I, <laughs> I have to say, about six or seven of the submissions were strictly COVID submissions, which means um, that was part of the description and they were filmed on cell phones or laptops. And some of those ideas were incredible. The, the biggest drawback we had this year because we had to adapt is we only had a limited time for screening. Whereas usually we go over two days here, we had about four hours. So a lot of the stuff we would have shown, we never got to. And some of these were the best. I think it, it's created an ingenuity that uh, you didn't have to have before trying to think outside the box. How can I make a film with like less than four people in a room in different houses? And the ideas are just incredible. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I think when this, you know, when this first happened, you can, you can sit back and think about all the reasons why you can't do something. And, and then I think the first knee jerk reaction is to, you want to do things the way you've been doing them and you're frustrated with the inability to operate the way you're used to. And then that's when the ingenuity comes out. And that's when people say, well, why don't we make content that fits with what's going on in society right now? And like, I don't know if you guys, when, uh, when the late night shows started getting, getting going again, it was only a matter of days. I think, uh, Jimmy Fallon was the first one he did like his, uh, his late night show COVID edition or whatever with his family holding up pieces of paper with the yeah. intro on it. His kids were holding up microphones. His wife was the director. I remember watching that and like getting kind of like choked up a little bit and just thinking like, like people are going to communicate no matter what. And, and look at this amazing stuff I get to see. I get to see inside of, you know, his house and his family environment. It's not formal. It felt like we were getting this whole new kind of media because we had no choice. And and you just think like this would have never happened if it wasn't for adversity. So, you know, I I think we have to keep making content no matter what. And we can't get stuck in our old ways because things change. Yeah. Uh, was it last night I was watching? I'm like, you know what? I missed the show prices, right? You know, our uh, director, Cole, our co-op student, we were, we watched what uh, that's my line and all, no, not, not that's my line. Uh, let's make a deal and all that. And uh, I'm like, where's this going to come on? It showed up on prime time last night. Uh, and it was socially distant. So we're finding ways to really create content outside the box, whether it is a game show, whether it is filming. So I think that's the only way is we have to move on uh, as a community, as a province, as a world, and uh, just continue making great stuff. So to segue to that infrastructure, it's super important for you know any type of TV and film industry. You guys are aware of that. So what does Chatham Kent need to get into this field? What do we need to make great films. Rob, you said, you know, we talked about, you know, the, the shelter in the basement. Ben, you've done some beautiful work for the municipality, uh, music groups. Do we need agencies? Do we need permit extensions? You know, what do we need here in Chatham Kent to make better filming and better TV programming? Mm -hmm. Ben. Thank you, Rob. I'll, I've been thinking a lot about this question because uh, like Rob, you have so much more experience actually creating films than I do. Um, but but I deal with all the back end. I deal with all the post production in this and the technical side. So the first and foremost, I would say what we don't want to happen is we don't want to turn into a another mini Toronto. We don't want to we don't want to permit things to the point where you can't do anything. We, the whole point of people coming to CK should be that it's easier. It's you know, there's more options. So although we do need permitting to make sure that things are done correctly, I don't think we need to over permit things to the point where it's a hassle to even accomplish a project or it adds that additional stress or avoids people making the trip to Chatham Kent because why would they if they're going to go through the same process? So I think we have to be very careful about that side of it. And then as far as infrastructure goes, I think, you know, there's got to be surrounding businesses that can support the film industry. There's a lot of different things. I don't know if you want to get into all those on this question, but but one thing the city could uh, do to support it as well is if there are any properties that are municipally owned that are just big, empty sort of warehouse space that's been sitting for a while, they could designate something like that with available power. And it doesn't need to even have lighting. It can just be an empty warehouse space that can be used as a set and that people can come in and set up and light themselves. So even just giving that option of a, of a location as a central thing, 
and then creating that sort of infrastructure of all the different people who are willing to allow their properties to be used. Um, so I don't know if we need an agency right off the bat. I think we just need to know that we have that those initial offerings to convince people to come here and get something started. Yeah. Rob? Uh, I agree 100% with that. Uh, also, um, we, we've actually been talking the past year or so about putting together a group and uh, kind of went on hold, obviously, with COVID. But uh, hopefully we can we can start back up again where it's going to be almost a one-stop shopping for filmmakers that want to come to Chatham. So it would have listings of, you know, hotels, of restaurants, of locations, of actors, of crew. It would be everything you need. It would also incorporate all the permitting like that Ben was talking about. If it's needed, here's everything you need. It would, it would basically be a one-stop shopping. That way someone doesn't have to come to the city and go to seven different buildings, talk to 18 different people to get one permit. And I kind of think that is the ideal way to go that will entice people to come here and enjoy what we have. No, I think that's well said. Um, it kind of segues to the next question, you know, uh, getting some infrastructure. So I'm going to change that up then again. If you can pick one thing about your favorite thing about filming anything in CK, what is it and why? My favorite thing. Go for it, Rob. About filming in Chatham? Honestly, I think it's, it, it expands on what I said prior. Um, this area still loves filming. If something is being done here, they want to help. They want to be part of it. And that makes the project so much better, you know, because we'll go into a, a restaurant to shoot a scene for a, a, a picture, kind of like, oh, no, no, Dark Betrayals. And uh, you get the people that run the place in the background or, you know, doing stuff with you. And it becomes a community project. And I think that is the beautiful part of filming around here. Yeah, I mean, look at what they're doing up in Port Stanley right now. They took over Port Stanley. They changed all the signs to read, you know, someplace in Maine or something like that. I can't. I don't even remember the name of the program that's filming there right now. I heard it the other day, but that whole the whole town is involved in it. They've refaced signage. They've got extras on board from the town. They've done casting calls. Like everybody's embracing it, and I think that, you know. If I had to pick my favorite thing, it would be the diversity of just locations that we have. We have beautiful assets in CK that we could that are a little bit different and just the way the architecture is, things like that. So we have some really cool things we could feature. But I do have to agree with Rob. It's just that sort of like supportiveness. And um, I think if people come this way, it's going to be that little bit of a breath of fresh air that everybody's all hands on deck and trying to make the production successful. They always say uh, one of our mottos in the ag, when good things grow in CK. You know, if we get into the film thing, good films and TV programs can be made in CK. So um, it's, it's guys like you that are making some awesome content that makes Chatham Ken stand out. You know, and I think as we traverse this interesting road into, you know, getting the world back into order and Chatham Kent back in order, we might be able to see some of these things back in with some of these awesome tips. And, you know, I think uh, Darren, and his team are trying to figure the same thing out, how we can really boost that up. So keep doing what you guys are doing because it's great uh, that you how you promote our little municipality and how you create content and really show up. Uh, so keep doing it. But guys, is there anything else that you would like to add as we close up? The I know it's the only thing I kind of wanted to say is that, you know, I think a lot of people, let's say you're outside of the film industry and let's say that you're this is something totally foreign to you you're well people want to come film movies here like i think a lot of people might go like what's in it for us it's going to be all these people trampling all over our quiet little community but you know remember those people are going to have to stay somewhere they're going to have to eat somewhere they're going to have to get wardrobe changes they're going to have to get hair and makeup there's going to be people around here that can help turn the production around through post so it's not just about uh, the arts. It's it's an actual like economic um, impact. And, you know, I'm just glad that we keep talking about ways to improve the economic impact of Chatham Kent. And this is just as vital as any other industry. Um, and it's a huge industry if we can get a piece of it. So I think that's all I would add is for, you know, people to really take this seriously and think about the the hundreds of jobs that could be created as a spin-off of a major production coming here. This is nothing to sneeze at. Again, Ben, agree 
Um, I also like the art aspect of it. And I say to people that are interested in filming in any way, shape or form, do a project. Uh, whether you have any experience or not with, with technology today, you can make a movie on pretty much anything. Just write your story, film your film, edit it together, and do it. And uh, you can enter it in the Chatham County International Film Festival. Um, but it, it helps not only you, it helps promote your area. And people watching it will see locations they've probably never seen. And as Ben said, once you start getting bigger and become Steven Spielberg, then suddenly the economy can grow around you. So I think some building blocks would be start making a submission for the CK International Film Festival right here in Chatham, Kent. And there's a great spot here in Chatham, Kent to make something. Uh, maybe we can get some tips from Dark Betrayals. I know I show Cole the, uh, some really interesting filming and uh, techniques that, uh, I mean, it's outstanding, right? You know, you know firsthand off, Rob. No, I'm saying we'll show it later. But uh, there, there are some great uh, things you can learn here. You can learn from school. So, uh, again, no, let's uh, hope that. You can uh, ask guys like us. And you can ask guys like that. Uh, I'll put the links in there. There's Gata Creative right there. And then there's JX3 Media right over here. So lots of, uh, and there's probably a whole bunch of others that I don't even know that you guys are probably more aware of than I am. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, just, you know, look out there and uh, let's keep the, the film and TV dream alive here in Chatham, Kent. So thanks again, guys, for joining me today. Thanks, hey, my guys. pleasure. Good seeing you guys.